After the long journey from Elkhart, we arrive in Ronan to start our work camping opportunity for the month of July. We worked hard and we played hard and we had a chance to experience so much of what this area has to offer. I know what you're thinking. This looks like we're leaving Montana. If you watched our last video, that was from the end of our time at the Silver Knot. But we want to share some of the adventure and fun that we had during our first work camping experience over the next couple of videos. So let's back it up to the beginning. <laughs> The Silver Knot and its sister venue, Sky Ridge, are beautiful wedding venues in Ronan, Montana. The property is also a beautiful harvest host, and when we stayed there last year, we got to know Kurt and Tracy Johnson fairly well, and they invited us to come back and do a camp hosting job for them in the month of July. We jumped at the opportunity to explore more of Montana. So excited, we're about to go to a small town uh, 4th of July parade, and we haven't actually, I was telling Ken, I don't think we've been to a 4th of July parade since been probably years. 1990, well, let's see, I don't know, early 2000s, long something time, like long, that. Long time ago. And the difference is, since we're in Montana doing uh, a parade, the it's like 72 degrees. If we were doing this in Texas on July 4th, you'd melt. You, could, you couldn't possibly oh, do it. It's, so. it's like beautiful and people are everywhere, so this should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's neat. We did the fireworks last night. What was interesting is that it was a little bit underwhelming initially, but as we left and we got to the truck, it was like, it seemed like they started launching the, the higher ones. So we probably should have stayed. We just tried to avoid the crowds getting out. <laughs> but anyway, let's uh, let's go check out the parade. Turn it up, turn it up. Others. Well, that was a lot of fun. Definitely, uh, definitely miss going to Fourth of July parades, and uh, makes me feel like a kid again, yeah. waving the little flag like this. <laughs> and I love the fact that I don't smell sweaty after after watching a parade. The weather is perfect. So, that was so much fun, and it was a long parade. It was too. a long parade for a small town. So this is Paulson, uh, Montana, right uh, on the southern end of Flathead Lake, and so just beautiful little town. Uh, there's a little hamburger place that it, we were actually watching uh, uh, TV a couple of nights ago and they did a special in this little hamburger place that has been here since the 50s. Oh, generations, yeah. yeah. We're going to try it. We passed by it earlier and it looked like there's a lot of cars lined up and now that the parade's over, it may be kind of full. So if not, we're going to go check it out. Yeah, but we will find it sometime during this trip for sure and get in there. But let's uh, let's go see if we can go get some, some burgers and fries. I'm hungry for a hamburger and a milkshake. Let's go. Let's try it. Rich Wines Burgerville has been an iconic drive-in restaurant in Polson for over 60 years. Just this past May, however, it went up for sale and is currently under contract. All right, so we got our food. I didn't waste any time. Yeah, but I ordered the onion rings and Pam's, that's the first thing she ate. <laughs> so it's kind of a cool Wait, place I'll back here. They got it, it's in the shade. We're kind of eating, got a little patio right here. Mm. And uh, poor Mika's still in the truck because you can't have dogs back here, but let's check it out. All right, so here's the first. This was actually on the hamburger. I thought it was an onion first, and I ordered no onions. So I got a little disappointed, but it's not an onion. It's a radish, and I've never seen... Is that a radish or an apple? That's well, a radish, because it's, it's a radish. Pretty yeah, it's radish, pretty carrot, and celery. What do you guys celery. think? It looks like an apple from there, but then it looks like a radish from there. So this is I'm the royal. I'm eating before it gets cold. 
So after lunch, we decided to go over to the other side of the Mission Mountains to the Swan Lake area. This is a less habited area and is definitely in the Grizzly Corridor. We decided to get off the beaten path and explore a little bit, so we drove down to the Swan Lake Wildlife Refuge. The refuge is comprised of 1,800 acres that's on the south end of Swan Lake. It's bordered by the Mission Mountains to the west, the Swan Mountains, and the Flathead National Forest to the east. And did I mention there's grizzly bears? Hey, Pam, what do we forget? Uh, based on that sign right there, I'd say we forgot our bear spray. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to walk too far. No, we're not going to go far. We're going to go check this out. So we're at the Swan River uh, Wildlife Refuge. and uh, Swan River National Wildlife Refuge. Yeah, if you heard that. National Wildlife Refuge. And that's about the third sign for bears we saw. So we're just kind of, if I'm not looking at the camera, it's because I'm looking out here. <laughs> but uh, we're not going to spend much time here. It's actually interesting because there's an area right here in the reeds that you can tell some large creature probably went through. So kind of like right there. You can kind of see it's like something was laying down there. It could have been a deer. But we're just going to go up here and keep the truck not too far away from us. <laughs> it's a little freaky. Oh, it'll be fine. Yeah, that's Pam's fame. It'll be fine. Pam's, Pam always says, it'll be fine. And my response is, yeah, until it's not. Oh, yeah, something was yeah. kind of bedding in Something here. was bedding down probably here. Deer. Yeah, so this is uh, so it's beautiful. Uh, we're kind of between the Mission Mountains, where we're staying at the base of the, on the west side of the Mission Mountains, and then this is the east side of the Mission Mountains, and then these are the, I guess, the Swan Mountain Range. So uh, it's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. We're not going to push our luck. We're going to head back while well, we still got our all our tentacles. Oh, you are so <laughs> dramatic. <laughs> So dramatic. Well, but it is funny how they, I mean, they made it very apparent, you know, that this is grizzly. So they say is the grizzlies come down from Swan Mountain Range to down to the, you know, to the watery area here. And then the, and then the black bears just kind of graze in this stuff. Yeah, so. Swan Lake is right there. Yeah. I'm going to do the Swan Lake. Is that, is that what the, uh, <laughs> it's not what even the ballet is about? It's not even Christmas time where we're talking about Swan Lake. Okay, <laughs> back to the truck, into the safety. As you can see, we made it back safely. And while we didn't get a chance to enjoy 4th of July with family or friends, it was indeed an awesome 4th of July. It was time to enjoy dinner and watch a beautiful Mission Mountain sunset. Everybody, hope that you're enjoying the video so far. We just wanted to take a moment and say thank you to our viewers and subscribers that have been with us for a while. We certainly appreciate your support. But if you are new here, we want to introduce ourselves. And I'm Ken. And I'm Pam. And we're the Roadsmiths. And so we'd love for you to hit the road with us and join our journey. And you can do so by hitting the subscribe button, by giving us a like, and then ringing that bell so you can be notified of new videos coming up. And what else? And uh, share the video with your friends because it's easy, it doesn't cost you a thing, and it really helps us a lot. We want to briefly just go over some things that we did during our first work camping experience. First and foremost, the Silver Knot and Sky Ridge are wedding venues owned by the same people, Kurt and Tracy Johnson and Rona in Montana, but they're also a harvest host. And the reason we got invited to camp host uh, this year was that we stayed there as harvest host members last year, got to know them well, and they asked us what we were doing this year in July. And we decided to come back and camp host for them and get a chance to explore more of Montana but the work camping experience was part of the harvest host. Exactly, and, and some of the things that we did uh, as the campers arrived, we would just greet them, answer questions, direct them to show them where they needed to be parked. Um, we would just generally take care of the sites and you know make sure everything was cool, run, watered, yeah, yeah, the watered the grounds because um, it's really it was really dry and hot. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. But remember, there are wedding venues. And so we thought, how cool would it be? And this was not an expectation. We volunteered to help with the weddings and, and uh, not be part of the wedding party, but well, be part of the, the, you know, the wedding venue the itself. Wedding. Yeah, so was, and sometimes we helped set up, we helped tear down, we bust tables, we wash dishes, we did things like that, and we helped the family. And I say the family because that was very inspirational. This is a family-run business, and their children are very involved in doing a lot of that. So we had a lot of fun helping them and, and doing that and uh, getting a chance to meet some of the people in the weddings, getting a chance to meet some of the people in the harvest host. So it was just a, a great experience uh, overall, and uh, we would we'd love to do it again at some point in time. Tracy and Kurt were so 
very gracious and let us have a lot of free time so we can go and explore, which is what we really wanted to do to come back to Montana. So we want to thank them for that. And so we had a lot of things. So this video is really about what we did as work campers and what we did to experience that part of uh, Montana again uh, that we love so much. So thanks again. Hope you enjoy the video and let's get back to it. Well, we finally ventured out of the city. <laughs> City, oh, the well, big city of Ronan. Yeah, well, we're in Polson too for Fourth of July, but we've been working, doing stuff, and so we decided to come up at Sunday afternoon, come up to uh, McDonald Lake, and it's only about eight miles or so from where we're staying. Hey, okay, wait, the, isn't there a McDonald Lake in Glacier, Glacier too? As yeah, well? yeah, yeah, yeah. This... Well, and old McDonald had a farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, this is a different McDonald Lake, but it's a closer McDonald Lake, and uh, a little beautiful. smaller, but it is beautiful. And that. Not sure if you can see up there. That's that's Mount. Where is it? Somewhere up here. That's Mount McDonald, and uh, it's still got snow on it. So beautiful. So we didn't realize how close it was. And as we we're coming up on this road, it's um, it's a little desolate. We're like, oh no, you know, grizzly bears, whatever. We get up here near us, you know, there's 30 people up here. So I'm um, excited though, because Tracy said we could bring their paddle boards and kayaks. And yeah. Spend a day up here. Yeah. So we have to. Uh, Got to get that done, so it's beautiful. I wish you, I don't know, I'm not sure the GoPro is doing it justice, but that water is crystal clear. I mean, I, I assume it's sort of, it's not a glacier lake, but it's obviously snow fed. So, anyway, it's and I'm, I'm getting, getting a, hot up I'm here. I'm getting a sunburn. I mean, that's what I should have put some sunscreen it's like on. 92 degrees here in Montana, and kind of like we said last year, yep. how far wow. north do you have to go? You're 91. You're pretty good. I wasn't, I, I tried to be a meteorologist once. Oh. She failed that class, but. Anyway, yeah, Lake McDonald. So uh, we'll definitely explore it, and there's hiking all around the edge of it. So um, yeah. So so next time we come and we have more time to spend here, we'll bring you back with us. Yeah, sure. Kurt and Tracy had told us that they'd like to take us out on their boat on Flathead Lake, and it couldn't have been a more perfect evening. <laughs> We had such a great time. They were so generous, they also let us take their kayaks out for a day on the lake. This will be a first for us. We need to hydrate before we get out. Yeah, no. uh, Tracy and Kurt let us borrow two of their kayaks, so we're gonna be going out into Flathead Lake. This is, uh, when you look at Flathead Lake from this side, it's not the prettiest side. The prettiest side is actually when you look back east toward the Mission Mountains. So anyway, wish us luck. There's a little bit of swell out there, but um, beautiful. And I don't know, that water is probably pretty cold, but uh, let's hope we stay in the canoe. So uh, we're not going to go very far. We've got to get back to the wedding and help clean up that. So wish us luck and we'll uh, show you some of the scenery. Well, we made it to Flathead Lake on kayaks this time. Thank you, Trace and Kurt, for letting us borrow those. Pam's doing a rescue mission out here. Can't see her. Maybe you can. Somebody lost their uh, blow-up ball and it just kept getting blown out further. We tried slapping it back to uh, the swimmers and uh, every time we'd slap it, it would go past back the other way. So Pam's got it in her kayak right now. You know, she's just that way. She's just... Uh, like the color savior sometimes she just you know she's always uh, saving people from stupid stuff so anyway uh she's gonna lose a lot of kayaking time for being a good samaritan but um uh, that's it i don't know if you can see behind me beautiful mission mountains and this water is crystal clear crystal clear so flathead lake uh, is in the flathead valley of course and it's the deepest point not where we are is 380 some odd feet so it's a quite a deep water lake and it's a cold lake and uh it's not too cold where we are but i'm sure it gets colder as you go out a little further out and deeper but we're kind of inland i'm in about five foot of water right now so uh pam's still messing with the beach ball that could be the way we spend the afternoon so we'll see how that goes oh she had a float 
I was telling people, I was telling our viewers that we're going to start a new channel. It's the, uh, well, it's almost the tip over channel, but <laughs> it's the Good Samaritan channel because you did a Good Samaritan deed. I did my good deed for the day. She did. She got, the, she got that ball back, but I guarantee that ball will be back in the water again. because I, I told them they needed to take some of the air out of it because it just kept floating. And you couldn't hold it because it was so full of air. Not only is Pam a good Samaritan, but she also gives free advice too. So. <laughs> So if you're ever on Flathead Lake, yeah. is there a specific is there a specific PSI you need to inflate the beach ball? Just tell our viewers. I give, I give advice whether you want it or not. Are we talking 25 PSI, 10 PSI? And, uh, uh, it's probably only about eight. It's eight PSI. Yeah. So you heard it right here. So uh, I, I don't you agree? If they let a little air out, it would have. I, I think so. It wouldn't have not blown around so much. And if the wind wasn't blowing I'm so much, so, it wouldn't so have blown much around. I'm smarter than you give me credit for. I give you a lot of credit. For being smart <laughs> but the eight psi i'm not buying actually that might be kind of close to being right actually because it's uh yeah so we'll uh hey siri what's the oh wait the siri doesn't go on gopro it doesn't go with gopro rock, rock, uh, all right let's go explore more flathead lake a little bit all right that was a simple was paddle fun. It wasn't too bad yeah, I should have saved the arm workout for later. Though. Your shoulders are probably really burning, but that was, uh, yeah, we probably went, I don't know, half a mile or something like that. Really not too far. A little, a little bit of swell out there. And, uh, but yeah, definitely very nice. <laughs> it's just too bad. I'm, I'm guessing that all that hay is probably from the Canadian farmers, I'm guessing. So uh, we got to head back now. We'll get the kayaks out, put them back in the truck. We're going to head back, and uh, it's time to help with another wedding. Join us next time as we explore the National Bison Range, the St. Ignatius Mission, which dates back to 1854, Ken will finally get to drive a Super C, the very unique Garden of the Thousand Buddhas, and we'll share more of our experience as work campers. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you then.